United Nations considered Chile the most negatively impacted country by the Great Depression. The reason why Chile was so greatly impacted was because 80% of the government revenue came from copper and nitrate export, which fell drastically due to the war. The GDP dropped 14% in 1930, employment rates fell, and by 1932 the GDP dropped to less than half of its original revenue. Local industry was promoted in order to protect the economy from future global shocks. After six years of drastically cutting government spending, such as social services, Chile was able to reestablish its creditworthiness. From 1938 to 1958, the government promoted economic growth by more government control. After the 1939 Chilean earthquake, the government of Pedro Cerda created the Production Development Corporation in order to encourage company growth by using government subsidies and direct investments. Protectionism became a significant part of the Chilean economy in order to protect domestic growth by limiting the power of foreign imports. Politically, Chile had a repressive, militaristic regime until 1931. The leader of the regime, Carlos Ibanez, was overthrown by revolting students and Ibanez escaped to Argentina. Juan Esteban Montero ran for president and won, only to be followed by more political instability. A year later, a military coup led by Carlos Davila replaced Montero. Later in December of that same year, military disagreements erupted into replacing the military coup with former liberal president Arturo Alessandri, now a conservative. Alessandri remained president until the mid-1930s when fascist and socialist groups began fighting. Even as returned from Argentina in order to aid the fascists and failed. Alessandri responded to the fighting by banning fascist meetings, which caused the fascists to try to seize the palace and fail again. Chile had a small impact on World War II. At first, Chile chose to stay neutral by closing trades with Germany. It then distanced itself from the Axis powers by firing pro-German military officers. Chile ceased relations with the Axis powers in 1943, further pushing a more allied agenda. In 1945, near the end of the conflict, Chile, along with Argentina, declared war on Japan. They were the last nations to enter World War II. Chile sent a very small naval force of six ships under the battleship Almirante La Torre to the Pacific Theater. World War II did not affect Chile much politically. Prior to 1932, Chile spent much of the 20th century under military dictatorships, much like Mexico. The most powerful of these military leaders was General Carlos Ibanez del Campo, who held power in 1925 and again between 1927 and 1931. He relinquished his power to a democratically elected successor in a move that gave him the respect of the Chilean people and allowed him to remain politically active for the next 30 years. With the reinstatement of constitutional rule, the strong middle class political power, the radicals, emerged as the dominant force in the Chilean government for 20 years until 1952. During this period, the state greatly increased its role in the economy in a move towards a more socialistic nation. This was a reprisal against the huge corporations mainly exporters of copper and nitrate, which had ruled the economy and social dynamic of the nation since the 1800s. In 1952, voters returned Carlos Ibanez del Campo to office for another round at ruling for a six-year term. After his term, Jorge Alessandri was elected, bringing conservatism back to power, effectively ending the liberal movements of the radical party. In 1964, Christian Democrat Eduardo Frei Montalva was elected by an absolute majority which caused a major reform. Montalva focused on the social and economic reformation of the country. He primarily focused on education, housing, and agrarian reform. Due to the large amount of opposition from the leftist party, his party goals were not fully achieved. In 1972, the economic depression began. Compared to its Latin American neighbors, Chile was relatively stable. By the 1960s, Chile began to be affected by the Cold War. 
Tilly reluctantly joined the Alliance for Progress. The Alliance was meant as a way to keep socialistic revolutions from taking hold in Latin America, but was belittled by conservatives. During the 1960s, Eduardo Frey served as president of Chile. Frey was endorsed by the Johnson administration because he was a Christian Democrat and his ideas for reform matched the goals of the United States. In 1970, the Socialist Party candidate Allende Gossens was supported by the Unidad Popular, comprised of socialist and communist members. He was the first Marxist president of a Latin American country and was also backed by the USSR. Allende had promised a republic to the people of Chile, and he said he would provide reforms that would make the working class more equal. However, the economy suffered drastically from runaway inflation and low world copper prices. He was not endorsed by President Nixon, who wanted him out of power. Nixon, with the help of the CIA, worked to get Allende out of power by means of a military coup and propaganda. By 1973, Allende had no support from the Chilean Congress or the judiciary. They claimed that his presidency was unconstitutional. This overthrow of Allende has been considered by many historians to have a heavy United States influence due to the role of Henry Kissinger, one of Nixon's advisors. This political overreach may have some correlation to the Cold War since the United States was particularly concerned with the political structures of other countries, especially the creation of, as President Nixon put it, another Cuba. Allende was overthrown by General Augusto Pinochet, a military junta. Before Allende could be assassinated, he committed suicide after his final speech. The United States supported the military regime financially, but publicly condemned it. The regime helped bring down inflation from 500% annually to 180% due to strict programs and planning. He remained in power until 1990, benefiting from the divided nature of the democratic, socialist, and communist parties.